Johnny had wanted to date Cindy since seeing her cheer for his football team freshman year. They both went to Jefferson High. Cindy was always dating somebody, but finally agreed to go out with Ronnie. Ronnie took her to the movies to see a sultry romantic love story, hoping it would turn Cindy on. It worked. Ronnie wanted to make sure they would be alone, so he parked his truck off the road by the woods. All the other kids would surely be parked at the crest, an inn overlooking the cliffs. The radio was playing slow love songs. Things really heated up. They rolled around on the seat, kissing and groping each other. In the heat of the moment, Ronnie yelled out, Ashley! Ashley! Suddenly, Cindy was quiet. She pulled down her shirt and abruptly sat up. What's the matter? Ronnie asked in a breathy voice. Cindy did not reply. Instead, she adjusted her shirt, then sat with her arms crossed. What's wrong? Ronnie asked again. What's wrong? yelled Cindy. You just called me Ashley. That's what's wrong, you jerk. Ronnie attempted to put his arms around Cindy, but she pushed him aside. Cindy started fidgeting with the radio, changing the station. Ronnie tried to explain, but Cindy wouldn't listen to him and insisted he drive her home. Cindy stopped pressing the buttons to the radio when she heard the voice of an announcer reading an urgent bulletin. A convicted murderer has escaped from McLean Hospital for the Criminally Insane. The man was injured in a high-speed car chase that resulted in the mutilation of his right arm. A temporary hook had been attached to his right arm. This hook will make him easy to identify. Please be advised, he is extremely dangerous. Ronnie turned off the radio immediately hoping this news would send Cindy flying back to his arms, forgetting about what he had accidentally muttered. Cindy was terrified. She was panicking and crying for Ronnie to get them out of there immediately. Ronnie tried to convince her that nothing was going to happen to them. Cindy would not change her mind. She locked her door and then reached over to Ronnie's side of the car to lock his door. Just as she did, they heard a loud thud on the passenger side of the truck. Ronnie slammed the gear into drive and flew out of there. Cindy was screaming for Ronnie to drive faster, faster, get us out of here. Cindy clung under Ronnie's arm all the way home. As they got closer to Cindy's house, they had both begun to calm down. Listen, Cindy, Ronnie said. I'm really sorry about what I said when we were, you know, making out and stuff. The truth is, I really like you a lot. I was just nervous, and you know how guys are. Stupid. Cindy smiled at this remark as he continued. I promise it'll never happen again. Cindy looked at Ronnie skeptically. He took her hand and sweetly kissed it. Cindy smiled. Ronnie attempted to sweet talk her some more. Cindy, give me another chance. I'd love to take you out again. And this time, no deserted roads. Maybe we can get a little dinner or something. Cindy smiled and gave Ronnie a kiss on the cheek. She leaned back to open her door when Ronnie stopped her. No, no, allow me. Wait right there. Ronnie jumped down off the truck and walked around to Cindy's side. Cindy was fixing her hair and checking her makeup in the rearview mirror when she noticed Ronnie was just standing outside her door. She looked up at him and motioned, What's the problem? Then she realized her door was locked. <laughs> Laughing to herself, she unlocked the door. Ronnie still did not open the door. Cindy rolled down the window and leaned out. Ronnie's face was white. He just stood there staring at the door handle. Cindy looked down at the handle. A long splatter of blood was smeared across the door, all the way back to the bumper. Hanging from the door handle was a stainless steel hook. <laughs>